Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent guest for you, but before I go ahead, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel, share with your communities, your colleagues, and anyone in healthcare interested in, in our industry. Also, let me acknowledge our partners, the Digital Health platform Touch V and our industry partner, Isaac Care. But today it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Stephen Doherty. He's a CIO and the Digital Health Executive. Stephen, how are you? Very good. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for the, the intro. Um, so let me just um, give a little bit of background about myself. So at the moment, I'm working as the digital advisor to the board for Solent NHS. Prior to that, I was the industry exec for health at Microsoft. And before that, I was a CIO in the National Health Service for five years. But I do have a background uh, in, in many different industries, uh, predominantly in the, the games industry. So we, we knew a lot about cutting edge technologies. Um, so I have that background. Brilliant, Stephen. Delighted to have you here. Thank you so much for accepting the invite. And today we are here to talk about health tech and innovation in the NHS. And the first question that I have for you is, in your experience, what trends have you seen developed in the NHS with regards to technology? So I, I joined the NHS in 2014. And at that time, the trends were around getting the basics right for people. And I mean, in terms of the right devices with the right access to information and tablets were a trend back then but also they were pretty challenging in, in using them to gain access to the right clinical information so during that period uh, we and i include myself saw many it strategies being developed to help to deliver those right devices with stable infrastructure and the prevailing trend was mostly on-premise infrastructure. What then happened around 2016 onwards were early digital strategies. So how do we help people adopt the technologies, become more efficient, more collaborative? I mean, consider the game changer of Microsoft Teams, for example. And I don't mind saying that, that South London and Maudsley um, the, the, when I was the CIO, we were the first trust to, to fully adopt teams across the NHS. I would say that from 2016 onwards, we started to go cloud first. Bear in mind that you know, I, I had a background in the games industry, which was very cutting edge, which gave me a, a different perspective and, and a different approach to cloud. Uh, but then in 2018, NHS Digital advocated the use of the cloud, which really reinforced the message about cloud adoption. And so from, say, 2018, 2019 onwards, and to date, we now have data strategies or perhaps digital and data strategies now being developed, whereby people have the right devices, know how to use them, have become more collaborative across and out with their organizations, thinking about integrated care systems, which has led to the overall direction of becoming data-driven organizations and adopting a continuous improvement approach. Back to you. Oh, brilliant. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much. Yeah, it's a, a complex area to navigate and you certainly have this really great experience. The, technical side with the industry expertise, which is a very uh, precious combination. Thank you for that. The second question that I have for you is, what are the challenges that you are seeing today? Okay, well, I'm not gonna dwell on the pandemic. As we all know, it forced rapid adoption of remote working, so, so leave that to the side. I think the challenges are around managing change, which is relentless. You know, this is placed enormous pressure on staff who are constantly up against it 
And as we know, the, the, the World Health Organization projected that by 2030, there will be a global shortage of 18 million healthcare workers. So I think the main challenge is managing this new normal of constant flux whilst ensuring that people look after their own well-being, that we look after ourselves and our colleagues. And I've seen a few different departments trying to constantly manage change. And I think this is where project and program managers have come into their own, are in uh, high demand. So that brings me to the, to the final point around challenges, bringing people on board with the relevant skills and experience has become more and more difficult, especially as the public sector must compete with the private sector. Well, fantastic. I mean, thanks for highlighting that because sometimes we associate the big challenges around technology, but there are so many other existing main challenges. And you mentioned the shortage of uh, people and skills and stuff, and, and there's so much going on. And also this like uh, really high pressure on getting everything right at the same time, which is more or less Im impossible. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. S Stephen, the third and last question is, where do you see opportunities to improve healthcare and the health of the population? Well, as, as mentioned earlier, Joe, I think cloud adoption, cloud adoption is it's now fully embraced and provides real value in providing and managing services and we're also seeing pockets of AI adoption across the NHS and certainly um, RPA, robotic process automation, has been gaining huge momentum with the likes of the Royal Free uh, Centre of Excellence led by Darren Atkins um, and they, they partner with Blue Prism um, and, and they must be working with probably around 30 to 40 NHS organisations now helping to automate those manual, laborious, non-value-add processes. And I also want to take the opportunity to mention that Solent NHS has also embarked upon the, the RPA journey uh, and are, are also working with Royal Free. So I look forward to seeing how that develops. And I think that finally, um, wearables will be one of the biggest opportunities and wearables are improving all the time and if you consider this latest generation of watches and rings you know they're bringing user generated user reported data together with you know if you bring that together with the e-health record uh, and perform say a digital triage that's powerful in helping with overall population health management I think that eventually we'll be able to track our health the same way we can understand what's going on with cars today, where we receive alerts from CPUs that monitor the car's sensors. In fact, recently, The Economist in its, uh, its last technology quarterly talked about the idea of the quantified self. And of course, bringing aggregated and anonymized information together into population health management platforms, if you like, will help to spot trends in the population and health across the country. And that can only be a good thing. Brilliant. Stephen, thank you so much for that. And you mentioned certainly RPA, for example, robotic process uh, automation, but also wearables. You know, as you know, I'm an advocate of wearables. I think wearables have huge potential. They uh, they're not being used to its full potential so far and it's great things that we can do with them. But now I really see organizations to start to think and implementing them and bringing like the data together and also some of the trends and some diagnosing early, maximizing the leverage of wearables. So which is really, really great to see. Stephen, thank, thank you so much for your time. We come to the end of the episode. I finish all my episodes in a peculiar way. It's not a question as such. It's called <laughs> one minute of fame. And you can talk about anything whatsoever. Uh, you can talk about personal life, family, a shout out to any companies, your great work, professional life, anything whatsoever. Over to you to round up. One minute of fame. One minute of time for me? Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> it's one minute of fame, which... <laughs> It's my, it's my, 
<laughs> you put me on the spot a little bit there. I, I think, to be honest with you, one of the, the, the one of the biggest things that gives me pleasure at the moment is 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 the purchase of a an e mountain bike. Which I tell you what, it's great because it gets me out there. It gets me it gets me going further, faster, and it's great. I really enjoy it. So that that's part of my downtime. Oh, brilliant, Stephen. Thank you so much. What a nice way to round up. Stephen, thank you so much again for your time, accepting the invite and your great work over the years. And thank you for bringing these amazing insights and your experience to our viewers and listeners. Thanks, Joe. It's a pleasure. I'm going to round up now to our viewers and listeners. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, let me acknowledge our industry partners, a digital health platform, Touch V, and also Isaac Care. Also, I'm going to post Stephen's um, socials in here, LinkedIn and Twitter. Connect with him. Make sure you ask him questions. Engage with him. He's a true expert in the industry. And I'll see you all next week.